Hey there, Soul Shines. Welcome to my magical family and Merry Christmas in July. Yay! Um, today we are going to be doing a Christmas tutorial and we are going to be doing the Santa hat towel topper. Last week um, I have a tutorial for um, getting the towel ready for this part. So um, you're welcome to check out the iCards to, is it on that side? That side, I think it's on this side actually. Check out the iCard for the tutorial on how to do the towel topper. If you want to buy the pattern, the pattern is linked in the description box below or you can go to my Etsy shop which is also linked down below um, to see what other towel patterns I have. So far there's only two, I'm working on it. Um, in a couple weeks we'll be doing a different pattern but for today this one I'm so excited what you will need for this tutorial you're going to need your towel that's already been prepared again follow the tutorial above you're going to need color a which is um, the color here for the brim and the pom-pom and um, color B, which is going to be your main color of the hat. The color for your strings or if you want to do a button, a button um, loop thing situation, um, that can either be the same color as a hat or it can be the color of the brim. I, that part doesn't matter whichever color you use. And I'm sorry I can't tell you how much your iron it actually uses. I don't know. I usually use a worsted weight four. Um, these are just probably super hard, um, red hearts, whatever. I've uh, bought any four weight. I think that you could use um, cotton if you wanted to. It's look kind of up to you. And you'll need, if you do the button closure, you'll need a button, probably a three fourths inch or a one inch button. And then you need a crochet hook, of course. Um, I use size age. I usually get a pretty average gauge. So you can choose to go up a, a hook or down a hook, depending on what you typically need for your gauge. So if you need to go up or down a size, that is totally, totally awesome. Whatever you need to do. I don't know that it matters too much, but it might, um, you know, if you get too far off, it's probably going to look a little funky. Just saying. So anyway, um, with that, let's get over to the um, creation station. <laughs> I just named it that. The and um, get going on this tutorial. What we need is a towel. The towel that you want to use. Um, with the base... Um, done to 32 stitches. You want 32 stitches around. Leave your yarn attached for the Christmas towel. Um, we obviously need yarn. This is my huge yarn ball for, um, it's going to be used for the brim and the pom-pom, so the poofy color. So whatever color you wanted, that's the color you're going to do your base with as you attach it to the towel. So your brim color is your um, base color. And then a color for the hat. I'm using this green color. I think it will look really cute to have a green hat with this um, ecru colored pom-pom brim stuff. I think it will be just super cute with this towel. Okay, um, I could have done red and ecru. I could have done a different green. I could have done brown. Honestly, even if I didn't, if I didn't want it to look right or look right is the wrong word for it. But if I didn't, if I didn't care how it looked, I could have put any color on here. And of course, you will need a crochet hook. I use the size H, USA H. I do not know what millimeters this is. I apologize if I remember. I will put it on the screen. And um. Yeah, if you need to go up a size or down a size, that's up to you. Um, you will need a darning needle 
to sewing ends, you would have needed it for your um, towel anyway. A pair of scissors because obviously you need to cut off the ends. You don't want your to be carrying extra yarn ball things around with you. So you definitely need a pair of scissors. And unless I am missing something, this is what you need. Oh, and the pattern. Okay, I gotta add this little clip in to add to my supplies because I forgot you're going to need um, something for stitch markers. You're going to either need a good size, two good size um, pieces of yarn or two bobby pins or two of the, I think they call them diaper pins or two light bulb pins or you could even do the claw clips but you're going to need two or three. You might need three. Um, but you need two or three stitch markers. So um, I'm going to grab a couple more bobby pins, insert this into the section right after supplies, and then let's get started. I got my glasses on too. That was another thing. If you wear glasses only for reading, you, you will probably need those too to read your pattern or see your stitches maybe. Mm. Um, okay, so I've got my pattern here. Again, I'm working off a draft that I am going through and doing a little bit of editing with so I don't have the images. Um, it says, now we've got our base round with 32 stitches. There's two rounds here that I use to get to 32 stitches. Like I said, that's in the tutorial. Round one. We're going to start with round one of this, like there's the base rounds and then the next thing is round one. We're continuing with our same color. Um, we're going to work in the front loop only, chain one, single crochet, um, chain seven, single crochet in the next hip, repeat around, and then end with chaining seven. So, how that goes. I'm going to take out my little stitch marker. Oh, I need stitch markers. So, what it said was chain one. So I'm going to chain one and I have a tutorial for how to chain that I will stick up in the I cards over here. So we'll chain one, then we're going to do a single crochet right in that same spot. Whoops, and I almost forgot front loops only. So we're just going to go in the front of that and do our single crochet. And of course, I have a tutorial for the single crochet. Also in the eye, eye cards. Okay, and we're just, whoops, I've got to remember. Chain one, single crochet, chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chain, and the next one we're going to do a single crochet in the front loop only. And chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to do a single crochet front loop only in the next stitch. Chain seven. And then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And how many are we going to chain? Seven. And we are just going to keep doing that. I will meet you around. Okay, let's look here. I have been working my way around, sticking to the front loops only, and I have one more stitch right here. So I'm going to do my single crochet in there. And then my pattern says to chain seven. And that is the end of my first round. So it will look like that. You'll have a row of loops, these chains that go around. And let's move to round two. Okay, working in the back loops of round one, mark your first stitch, single crochet around, join in 
front loop. And then I say 32 single crochets. If you don't have 32, then decrease in the last stitch. We're gonna go into the first stitch here, back loop, we're gonna do a single crochet, and I'm gonna use my bobby pin because I have it here. You could use yarn, you could use a stitch marker. Mark my first stitch. And then we're just going to single crochet in the back loops. Oops, trying not to get caught in the front little chain loops. We're just gonna single crochet all the way around and I will meet you when we get over to about here. So I'm almost around here. This one looks kind of funny because of the way it's separated, but that's okay. It will be fine in the end, don't worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to count before I do any more because it looks like I have one more to do there and I wanna make sure that I have 32 because it said if you don't have 32, you need to decrease. So I marked my first one. Got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 31. And as it should be, I did it right this time. Sometimes I don't do it right, hence the reason why it's in there. 32. I'm gonna have single crocheted all the way around. Join in front loop. Okay, so we're gonna go over. I'm gonna take this out now because I can remember where my stitch is. We're gonna go over. We're just gonna go in the front loop there. And go through both of them. Okay. And now you can see that it's kind of not as obviously different, but we're also gonna do more layers of these loops. It's all good. Round three, we are repeating round one. So we're gonna chain one. We are gonna single crochet in that same space that we came up in and chain seven. Okay, and we're gonna come and then the front loom only, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna single crochet and we're gonna chain seven. Okay, and then we're gonna go in the next stitch and single crochet in the front loop only and chain seven. And then keep going and I will see you when I get around to the other side. And, and as you can start to see, you can tell it's not gonna, like nobody's gonna notice. Besides the fact that it's in the back, nobody's gonna notice that you know, because we're doing multiple layers here. But let me talk really quick about something that just came to mind. If you are worried about where this starts, um, like I can kind of tell because there's two things, but you could have put a stitch marker in your first stitch. Um, I'm gonna go in right here. and this will be the end of my round. Okay, because my next one that I go into, I have my chain there and my single crochet there. That will be my one that I'm actually, that'll be the next round. For round four and five, or as many as you want to get the brim size you desire, repeats round one and two and end with a round one join and tie off. So if you only wanted, if you decided that you're like, that is a plenty of brim for me and that's all I want, you would end here. If say you only wanted two um, rows of fluffy stuff, you would just find your next stitch there. You would join it, you would tie off. Okay, um, I like to do three, so I'm gonna do another set. And if you wanted it to be even thicker, if you wanted more brim, you would just keep going, but you always end where your last thing you've done is chain seven. This round, we're gonna be working in the back loop, so I'm just gonna join right there 
in the back loop and I'm going to make a single crochet there and I'm going to mark up my stitch. And again, it looks kind of funny, but it like you can't even really tell where it's at on the round below, right? Okay. I mean, it's kind of, I think it's this one, but still, it's not, it doesn't matter. Once it's all done and tied in, you won't even see. Okay, so back loops are pretty easy because it's the only loop showing. You're just going to keep single crocheting all the way around on this round. And remember, we want to make sure that we have 32 at the end of this round. So I will see you when I get around. I'm pretty close to the end here and I just want to count before I do in case, um, before I get any further, I'm going to count these. Okay, so I've got my one here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-one. So I need one more. So I'm going to go there and then I'm going to join. I'm just going to join in the front loop only. Okay. I'm going to chain one and then single crochet right there. And then that same spot. And to make it easier for me, I am going to put my stitch marker in there. And then I'm going to chain seven. and go single crochet in the next front loop. And I'm gonna go around. And then that will give me three layers of loops, which is what I want. Like I said, if you only wanted two, if you wanted to keep doing more, you would do more. I will meet you when I get back around here and we will fasten off. Okay, I'm gonna do my single crochet right there. Chain seven. And that ends the round, and then the end of the stitches is to join, and you're just gonna go through both like a normal join, pull all the way through, and then do a th another chain as, so take your scissors, cut off using, leaving a little bit of a tail, pull all the way through, that last chain became your knot, that is done. Now, because we're working back here, I'm actually going to take, and I, this isn't in my pattern, this is just a choice that I'm making. I'm going to pull it through under towards the back, and I'm going to actually pull it through the, um, the back loop here of one of the things, just because I want it on kind of the inside. That's just kind of an aesthetic choice that I just made. Okay, so this is it. Um, did I work over that? I think I worked over this. I'm going to actually tie this in um, so I can trim my edges. I want to do it now as I go just because the, um, I'm just going to go in right through here underneath like the little um, legs of the single crochets. Um, I want to do it now because it gets harder when it, once you get the thing and I just don't want to deal with as many ends as it gets going. So I'm going to trim that really quick. I'm going to put that on my cycle. I like to use it for stuffing my gnomes and I need to make a gnome soon. Um, oh, I don't want to tie this one in. Okay, so I don't want to actually do this one yet because I want to work over my yarn. This is what we've got so far. We've got so our little floofies. I got three rows. I just like the way three rows looks. And um, and we're ready for green. Now that we've gotten the um, floof done, we lay our towel with the front of the towel facing us like this. And then we get to 
let me just read what it says. Lay towel with front facing you. Make sure any image you have is centered how you like. Put a marker in the stitch closest to one side where it folds and count 16 across the front and put a marker in stitch on the other side. Turn the towel over and count back eight from the left marker to the back of the towel. Put the, another marker. This is your starting place. And so let's do that. So first thing we're going to do is I've got this image on the towel. I'm just going to kind of decide, you know, like say when I, um, if I went by where the folds from the store are, um, it would look something like that. And I don't like that, right? I don't want my my thing there. I want my image that's the front of my towel that's going to be hanging so that people can see it. I want it to be kind of centered I like that. Okay. So then I'm going to take one of my bobby pins, my stitch markers, and I'm going to kind of pinch the top here and I'm going to say this stitch right here looks like it's probably the closest stitch to the side and you know one stitch off is not going to change the orientation too much so don't worry about it then we're going to count across the front of the stitches we're going to count 16 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and I'm going to put my stitch marker in that stitch, the 16th stitch. I think there'd be 15 between them. Um, let's count that for sure. Let's find out if there's 15 between them. So here's my first stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, because then the next one's got the stitch marker. Okay, so I'm going to turn my towel this way now. And counting back from the left marker. So, you know, I'm going to do this just for the sake of the tutorial. This is my left side. I'm going to count back from the left marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put a stitch marker in that stitch. And if I count, did my math all right, I should have eight this side. One, two, three. this place right through here where we've joined stuff is going to be a little awkward to crochet in, but it will work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there should be seven between these ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Remember, we're going to work over this. So I'm actually just for the sake of this, I'm going to put my, I'm going to catch that with my stitch marker too. If you don't have a bobby pin and you're using a different kind of stitch marker, you don't have to catch it there. Just make sure that it stays over. These three or two or three right there, we'll get when we get around. So don't worry about that. They'll still get, um, we'll still work over them. But we're gonna start working over over here. That was a weird sentence. Over over here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna need our hat color. Like I said, I'm using green. I can tell this is an older rolled ball because it's pulling from the outside, not from the center. Ooh, what an opportunity to hook my other tutorial. I have a tutorial where I teach you how to do a center pull yarn ball. And it's going to be linked up in the i cards. Got my crochet hook and let's read this the thing. With um, your hat color, attach yarn. And so I'm just going to make a knot. And I'm going to attach it right where my stitch marker is. And it's just in a back loop because that's what we've got. I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to pull it up through. And I'm just going to do my single crochet there. So that's, okay. And that's my first single crochet and I attached it at the same time. I'm going to work over both yarn tails and I'm just going to single crochet in these back loops all the way around. Until I get to 
the other side and this is what I'm doing just a single crochet around um, and then you're moving up the markers as you go so I will keep going here um, my white one by the time it goes through I'm gonna actually drop my white tail because it's going to have these three and these few but I'm gonna go over the green a couple more times I like to not have my tails come out at the same place. I like to have them have a little bit of a separation. Um, and then I've got one more here. And then here's where my marker is. So I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna do my stitch, and I'm gonna put my move my put my stitch marker back in. If you are doing a yarn. Um, you know, the crochet crowd does a really good example of how to use the yarn to mark your stitches up. Um, I haven't used that method in so long because um, I like bobby pins. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going around and I'm going to do the same thing when I get to the other side. I'm going to move it up. Now I did not mark this first stitch with my bobby pin just because that was the first one that came out. But I could have just stuck it in there and marked it. Um, and I will probably, can. I, I'm pretty sure I'll continue to use this and move it up just like I did before. So I'm gonna meet you around. I'm gonna move this one up just like I moved this one. I'll meet you at the end. So I got where it's weird right through here. And it's weird because that's where we did the join and fasten off. And so I've got from my marker I've got one, two, three, four, and I know there's two stitches on this side of this weird place. So I'm supposed to try to just get one in there. So I'm just going to kind of pick a place and that looks a little more sturdy. It looks like that's about where it was joining. And go in there and then I'm going to go under this one. As you can see, I'm still working across my yarn. And I'm going to go into that one. And now if I count, I should have 32 stitches around. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. And then it says at the end of this, um, it says we have 32 stitches huh apparently I didn't mark join but I do want you to join so we're gonna go through both and pull it up a good thing I'm editing this pattern as we go and we're gonna chain one I didn't say to chain one either we're gonna single crochet down into that one and we're gonna put our stitch marker in okay so next we are going to, I'm going to tug this a little bit to make sure that that pulls that all the way through and then kind of tug it back out. Okay. And I know that working with the ecru is really hard to see and this yarn is probably really hard to see as well because it's dark and I apologize for that. Okay. Now this should be where that comes out, but what I'm going to do is count okay somehow I have 31 which is why we count oh, the one problem with long hair all you people complain about your animal hair getting in your stuff I don't even have like we have a dog but it's a non shedding dog but I get my own hair in this stuff okay delete 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 Okay, I actually did things wrong. I read the wrong row. I was wondering why the count was off. Okay, um, so I undid this and I've started again. <laughs> I'm going to, I changed one, chained one here. I'm gonna single crochet in that one. And then I'm gonna single crochet until I get to my marker. Oh, I want to put my mark, my stitch marker there. It's just a little bit easier, so I don't mix, miss up that mistake that chain for a stitch. 
Um, I'll do counting as well to make sure. Gotta go across until I get to my marker. Okay, so I have crochet, single crochet right here. The next stitch is the marker. Okay, I'm gonna take that one out for a second. I'm gonna stick on my needle and or hook in that one, pull up. So I have two. I'm gonna pull, stick it in the next one, pull up. So I have three and go through both. That's a decrease. I'm gonna put my stitch marker back in. Now I'm gonna cro single crochet across till I get to my next one. Okay, I'm here again. I've got one more stitch. Do a single crochet in that one. I've got my marker stitch. Take my bobby pin out for a second, pull it up. Go in the next one, pull it up. So I've got three loops. Go through all three. Decrease made. Put my bobby pin back in at the top of that stitch. And now I'm going to work till the end. Now I like to count right here because this may or may not be a stitch. Sometimes my counting is off. It looks like I have 29 and I'm going to count again the other way to make sure. It's 28, 29. Yep, I still have 29. So I'm going to go in one more. And then I'm going to join it where I put my marker. I'm going to join it and I know I need another row of single crochets. So I'm going to chain one and single crochet in the top. Put my marker back in and then I'm going to look at my directions. Round eight. Round eight. Single crochet until one stitch before the marker. Do a decrease. Move the marker up. Single crochet until one stitch before the marker. Do a decrease. Single crochet to the end. Join. There should be 28. And then we are going to finish taking care of these. So they're completely out of the way. So we don't have to deal. remember to deal with them at the end. I'm going to do that after one more round. All right, so single crochet two before, one stitch before. I'm gonna do that with you guys. Here's my stitch marker. I have one more stitch. So I'm now is when I'm gonna do my decrease. I'm gonna put one in. I'm gonna put one in where the marker is. Pull it up, got three. I'm gonna do my, put my, pull my yarn through and that's where my decrease is. And now I'm going to single crochet across until one stitch before the stitch marker. I'll meet you there. Okay, I've got one stitch left before I get to my marker. I'm going to stick it in, pull a loop up, got two on my hook, stick it in. I'm going to take my marker out, pull a loop up. I've got three. I'm going to go through all three. Another decrease made. And now I'm going to finish, go to the end. And don't worry, you push these down around. I was just thinking about that. It was like, it looks so funny when you push them down like that. But when you get done, you're just gonna flip them back up and it will be fine. So they're just, we're pushing them down out of our way as we go. And I think that's just kind of a natural thing to do, but it will be all perfect in the end. So speaking of end, I am about here to the end of my round. I'm pretty sure that I need to go here. I'm sorry, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to pull this a little bigger so I can count. This time we should have 28 stitches because we decreased twice. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. I trust in my counting on this time. If I didn't trust it like last time, I would count again, but I feel good about this count. Sometimes I feel like I'm like, did I miss a stitch? This will count two or three times. I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna join this. I know that is not even close to the end of my hat. So I know I'm gonna do another row of single crochets. So I'm gonna mark it here. Okay, so the way that this works is it says rounds 9 through 18. Repeat round 7 and 8 alternatively. Each row is two stitches. And, um, it says minus two stitch is 
until you get to eight stitches. I think I'm gonna go through and reword some of the things and add those joints. But what we are going to do is the next round, we are going to go until we get to the stitch marker. We're gonna put our decrease there. Go till the stitch marker, put our decrease there, come to the end. We did 28 stitches on this, so we should have 26 when we get to the end. Um, the round after that, we are gonna go until one stitch before, so we're alternating where our decrease goes. One row it goes, we put the beginning of our decrease there, the next row, it's the end of our decrease that's the um, stitch marker. The row after, so we're gonna do 26, then we're gonna do 24, nope, yeah, we always go by twos. 26, 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, etc. Until we get to eight. So um, I'm gonna do a couple more rows with you to help you remember the pattern um, of decreases. So we're gonna go across until this time. We are going until we get to the stitch marker. Here is a tip for you. If you are afraid that you don't know where you're at, write, make up, take a piece of paper. I don't have a pen close by. But take a t piece of paper and you'll write on it um, 26, 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8. Okay, you're gonna mark them all the way down and you may want to put, um, maybe write at marker, before marker, at marker, before marker to help you remember which ones, a, which decrease you're doing and then you can just mark them off as you actually do those rows. If that helps you to remember what you need to do. So this one is one where we're going into the decrease. So I'm here where my stitch marker is. I'm going to put it in to the decrease or to the stitch marker and mark it. So again, I'm going to single crochet until I get to my marker. Okay, I'm going to go across. I'll meet you. Okay, I'm at my place here. And I'm going to go in to that because we went to the marker, pull one up, pull one up, finish my decrease, stick my marker in. I'm going to go to the end and my count, make sure that I have 26. Um, and then, because I forgot to do it, we're going to tie in the finish off our ends. Some people just like to snip it. They, they're like, I've gone over it five times, I'm good, um, and snip it. I like to send it back through a second time. That's just me. Um, so I'm here, I'm pretty close to the end. I think that was my last one, I'm gonna count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 16, 18, 20, 20, 24, 26, okay. I'm actually gonna come back here, cause this one, Look at that white, that one's like way whiter than these. I'm gonna come back to there. I'm gonna fix it. It bothers me. I want it to be consistent. So I went in and now it's the same size as the rest of my stitches. I probably started talking there. And now I'm gonna count again, but I will cut that out for you guys. I'm going to join here. I know that I have not gotten down to eight stitches around. So I'm gonna join. I'm going to single crochet up. I'm gonna do my single crochet there and put my loop in. And then I would continue working, but like I said, I want to finish these while I can still get in here easily. I mean, like you can go in up through the bottom and sew them in. But I, like I said, I like to get it done. Um, one of my rules for when I go back through on these is I like to take and go down a row here or two, but I always go down in the same color. So my white, off-white here, my grew, 
Medico in there and I'm just going to send it under some of these a few of these just to kind of get a second thing in and I'm going to snip that off put it in with my recycle yarn um, and then I'm going to take the green and like I said I like to do it in the same color so I'm going to go up through here just one row or two wherever it comes out and then I'm going to go back through a few of those underneath um, these are the legs of the stitches I like to go that's the easiest place to send them through and turn that off put it in my recycle and now my yarn ends are taken care of I'm gonna keep going um, we just did 26 this round we want 24 and this is the before the marker stitch so we're gonna keep going around we're gonna single crochet over and here's my marker I've got two stitches so I need to do one more okay I've got one stitch left this is before the rounds mark before the marker so I'm gonna go into that one and go into that one and go pull it up through um, I like the way that I do it because I know that no matter what my stitch my hook has to go into the where the marker is either at the the first stitch or the second part of the stitch so um, let me cr single crochet around to the other side so uh, here I am I know that this is a before so I'm gonna stick it in this one this is the first half of the stitch pull it up and I know that my marker goes in under that one and it pulls it up right if I'm at the add of a marker if you noticed let's say that I was at an add marker then it goes in at the first and then I pull it up and so I kind of like the way I stick it in where the marker is because I know that the marker either always has to be the first one I do or the second one I do and if it's not a part of my decrease then I am doing the decrease in the wrong place okay pull it up make sure I put my marker back in um, make sure that you keep your markers way at the end so that they don't come out I have a friend she's like I don't like using them and I think it's because she is not kind of watching that her um, that it goes all the way to the end or maybe she's using looser ones I don't know it needs to be a bobby pin not a uh, hairpin hairpins don't um, do this where it pulls it tight down against the second bar doesn't have this wavy thing hairpins are just two straight loops those will not stay in your crochet okay so we're gonna keep going around and count them this time we should have 24 stitches around when we are done 20 22 24 alrighty and I'm gonna go in there and I know that I have I still have plenty of rows to do so I'm gonna pull it up put my stitch marker or do my single crochet in there chain one single crochet in the same spot mark it okay my next one I go to and I do my um, I'll do my decrease with my hook in the first this will be the first half of my decrease that will be the second half of my decrease um, the row after that I'll do before so this will be the first half this will be the second half we're just gonna keep doing this until we have got eight we've done eight around now if you think about it eight stitches that's like gonna be pretty tiny but you can do it it's not as hard as it sounds but you can do it I have faith in you I'm going to take a break and do my lunch and then crochet until I get to the eight stitches and then I will meet you back here okay for you guys it will be like no time remember you can always pause rewind um, speed up slow down with all the gears I'm popping in here before I am done because I wanted to say something the reason why we single crochet right into the space 
Because I know not everybody does that when they're working in the round. Sometimes people, let me take this one out for a second. Sometimes people will do their, they'll, they'll do their chain one. And instead of going right into that space right there where it comes out, they'll go into the next one. You cannot do that in this pattern because as you can see, our edges are getting closer and closer to the center here. We need that space on the side. And if you kept moving your thing up, you'd end up all the way on the front. So it's really important that you do your chain one and then single crochet right where that chain one is coming out. So it's all on top of each other. That puts our, our seam of chain, our going right up the center back there. And then, um, then it's not gonna go round kind of thing. So it's really important that you do that chain one going up right there. I didn't do a great job of making sure my I did I did I should have written down like I said I actually may put that in the pattern update and actually put it where you have um, kind of a little guide maybe in like columns for those um, patterns pieces so anyway I've gone around I've ended or I've I've joined and I'll just put that in to mark it, okay? And I'm just going to um, fasten off and leave a little bit of a tail done with my green. And um, I'm gonna work around that. I will probably do it all the way around and then cut it off because it does, like it's gonna be awkward to go in here because it's so small but we've got here our hat we're doing awesome 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 we will be moving back to our pom-pom color i guess if you wanted to do a pom-pom in a third color and have three colors you totally could to join this i'm going to we don't need these anymore but we might need our um beginner ground one. I want I actually want it to be a little bit longer because I want it to be able to tie in my ends. Okay, and so I've got my back to me. Got here where it tell did off. I'm gonna go like just join it somewhere in the middle. I could join where my knot was or I could join one over. It doesn't really matter exactly. But I did my knot before, just like before. Whoops. <laughs> Apparently I wanted to do that. Okay, that's a tail. Okay, I got my tail behind, my other tail behind, and I'm gonna pull up. And I'm just gonna do my single crochet right there. And let's read really quickly. Um, so we're attaching yarn to the back middle, single crochet around, and join. And there should be eight stitches. So I've got one like so this is kind of tight because there's so few three oops looks like I caught a piece of the green right there okay. working around both tails How many do I have here? I think I need one more, two more. Two, four, six, eight, two more. Okay. catching weird. I got the other side. So you gotta be careful on this one because it is so small. I caught the, I ended up accidentally catching on the other side there. Okay, make sure I got my working yarn. And that should be eight. Okay, two, four, six, eight. And then it 
it said join. So I've joined. I think I'm going to take a second and take care of my green yarn, my um, off white yarn. I'm just going to keep working with. Um, like I said, it's it's gone over eight times, so it's probably fine. Um, but if I can get my tail out of the way, I'm just going to skip over right there and then I'm going to start going in um, backwards through the same space. Trying to get under there. It's not too bad if I skip. And I'm probably only just going to do a couple up here. I'm trying to go under. As long as I can't see it through on the front side, I'm good. So I'm going to pull that one through and then I'm going to turn that one so I don't have to deal with that one anymore. I'll put this back in here. And let's read our directions really quick. Um, chain seven, slip stitch in back loop. So this is a little different than down here. So we're going to chain seven out. Oh, let me keep reading. Chain seven, slip in stop back loop around, which is eight loops. Um, then we're going to chain seven, slip stitch in front loops around um, and join. So together we should have about 17 loops. Tie off, leaving a longer tail to sew the opening closed um, by sewing across where the where the colors meet. So we're gonna chain seven, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're gonna slip stitch in the back loop. And I also want to just pull that over so it looks like it's just a part of that and slip stitch, chain seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, and again we're gonna slip stitch into the back. So go in. Um, if you were just doing it in the loop, not worrying about your tie, you just have the one over it. You pull it through, and you pull it through both. But we're gonna put this over so that we're pulling under, oops, so pulling it under that loop and continuing through, except for my yarn split, okay, and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again, slip stitch into the back loop of the next stitch, pulling it through all of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go one more time with my end here. So I'm gonna slip stitch, pull it all the way through, chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to kind of pull this a little bit tight just so that it's for sure under all of that. Snip it and then I'm going to keep working. So I'm going to go in under here, slip stitch it, chain seven, and slip stitch in my next chain or stitch back loop only. Remember that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slip into my back stitch all the way through. Chain seven. I'm gonna count really quickly. How many loops do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have one more stitch here, so I'm gonna go in the back loop for that one. Oops, my yarn ended up on the front. Go in there. Pull all the way through. And now I'm gonna chain my seven. And this time. I'm going to kind of move these out of the way because now I want to go in to the front loops of those same places that we went in. The first one's a little bit hard to see. 
because of where it comes out. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go in the next one. And I'm going to chain seven. Four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to go in here. And not so now I'm working in the front loops around here. Chain seven. Into the front loop there. Chain seven. Next front loop. And the next front loop. Slip stitch. Chain seven. Sometimes when you start getting a bunch of stitches right by each other, it can be a little bit hard to figure out where to go in or to get your hook through. Just going to throw in a dinner. Three, four, five, six, seven. Get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you're kind of back around. I'm going to count my loops, and they're really a little bit harder because I can't really count them in order, but I'm going to count them kind of in layers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, 13, uh, I'm just going to say I've got enough. You know, it's the, it's not like it has to be perfect. Um, it's just that we want it to look, you know, a little floofy here. And so we're going to find somewhere to attach this in. Pull it all the way through both of those. Oops, let's do that again. going to fasten off and I'm going to leave it a little bit longer because we need sewing. And I'm going to pull that all the way through. And now we've got a little floof ball there. A couple of my hats I've taken and I've like bent down this and then sewed it. So it kind of looks like the hat's flopped over. I don't think I love that as much. So I usually just finish it, leave it long and tall, which is what my directions say. So you can choose. We're going to put our, um, I'm going to put this on here. We do need, not need this for a minute. We're going to put our needle on here and let's look at the directions again. So across where the white meets the red, keeping it flat, which would say color A meets color B, keeping it flat, fluff, poof towards the front. Okay, so basically I'm going to take this end and I'm going to go in across this way down here and where these stitches are. See where the stitches are coming out with the green? We're going to go in either at the top of the stitch or the bottom of the stitch. It doesn't really matter because it's, you know, under the floof. But that's where we're going to sew it across. So I, I'm just going to go in across here to close it. And I'm going to, I like to go around and then go back through the other side to do do hope you can see what I'm doing just kind of going right across there like the floof's gonna cover it so I'm gonna go back in around this one right here and then I'm gonna come up in here 
I'm gonna go through maybe through to tie it off under here. I'm going to make sure that there's a yarn there and I think I'm gonna kind of come up under where it's tighter here and come again so that I've gone through a couple times. So that closes it off. Trim off that. It's closed the top of the hat together and we've made the poof. Okay, and then I said kind of floof it towards the front. Okay, so then this will hang from the towel. So if you look at the back, you'll see that there's two options now. Okay, we're gonna make a choice. I have in my pattern, um, I had the option to make it with ties. I use ties because then I hang it on my refrigerator door. Um, or you can do the button latch that a lot of people do and they hook it onto either a towel rack or their oven door. I never liked it on the oven door because I'm like, you open the oven and then your towel lands on the ground. I never liked that but you can make um, that choice to do it either way. To do the ties or the button, you could use either color, but I tend to use the same color I use for the hat to do this. So I'm going to probably do the button option first to talk, talk about it, show you what to do, um, because when I finish this, I actually wanted to have the ties for myself. So we're gonna set that aside for a second and I'm gonna read down to the button. So the button option is, um, you have two options. You can make the button tab and sew it on or you can stitch it on from the beginning. So then I give you two options for row one. So to sew it on, well, we'll talk about if you're gonna do it straight on. Um, if you're going to do it straight on, what you would do is give it enough to cover to work over. Um, you would um, do your knot. You would go to the back of it and kind of close to the top here. You want to stick your yarn into one side. Well, if you're right handed, you want to do it to the side, right? you're going to be working across the top and you'll also want to work across your tail so you're going to stick it through somewhere and you're going to pull it up through there and make a single crochet and then up next to there you're going to pull it up in you're going to make a single crochet you are going to go up in again make a single crochet, go up in again. Oop, I should have probably started one more over. You're gonna do that. I should have started it over further because I'm like, oops, I got to the end, I have four, I need five. I, so I should have started one over here. But that's how you would attach it. You would start there, you would click it in, or put it in. And let's do that again, actually. So I've got my not on there and I know I need to start over further so I'm going to come way over here towards this side here and that's the thing you want to make sure that you have enough I've got hole two three four five holes available to me and so I'm going to pull it up in here I think I just pulled my yarn tail in there oops <laughs> Okay. Gonna pull it. It's a little bit harder to pull through when you are attaching it to yarn, but not impossible. One. Go down through where you can find a hole. Two. And you're just gonna go across until you have five. Okay. That's if you are attaching it. Okay. Um, and you just want to start it from the start. Then you're gonna do follow your instructions, okay? So now, if you are going to sew it separately, I'm gonna scoot this out of the way for a second. I will follow the instructions for the other row. 
to sew it on, you're going to chain six. I think you need to leave a very long tail and I need to remember to write that in there. Oh, so many things and I don't have my pen with me. Dang it. Okay, chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got six chains and then you are going to come back in and the second chain you can do it in the back loops or the top of the loop over here it doesn't matter just gonna be sewing it on the back anyway one two three four five so you're gonna single crochet the second chain and all across till you have five single crochets. So now whether you have it attached to the back of the hat or you're doing it separate to sew on later, you have five single crochets to work in. So for rows two through 22, you're gonna chain one, turn your work, chain single crochet, five across. Across, that's a weird way to say that. Across. Five across to the other side. And you're gonna chain one, turn your work. That was row two, this is row three. You're gonna keep going across, okay? You would do this until you have done 22 rows. You are welcome to add or take away rows as you see fit, okay? I'm going to pretend that I have done 22 rows. You're going to chain one single crochet in two stitches. One, two. Slip stitch in the same stitch as the single crochet. Slip stitch down into here, pull up, go through both. Slip stitch in the next stitch. And you're gonna slip stitch into two stitches. Slip stitch into one, slip stitch into two, chain one, and then you're gonna single crochet in that same place you slip stitched and slip stitch into the next one. Ta-da! You have this funny little um, smiley face, chain one, turn your work. You're going to single crochet in two stitches. Single crochet, single crochet, okay? Now you are going to chain one. You're gonna skip that space and you can single crochet in the top over here on the other side, single crochet, single crochet. Oh, something I should say and probably write in the pattern. When we chain this one, chain it loosely, chain it loosely, and then single crochet over here, single crochet over here. There is our little buttonhole. Hopefully, you're, it's big enough for your button. Um, if not, you may want to actually chain two there. Single chain one, turn your work. Now you're going to single crochet in the two stitches. You are gonna single crochet, one single crochet in your space. You're gonna single crochet in the next place. Single crochet in the next chain. So you're back to having five across, but now you have a little hole, okay? and yarn stretches, so you should be fine, um, but double check that. Okay, chain one, and now we are gonna chain one, we're gonna do a decrease. So we're gonna do one decrease, we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna do another decrease. So now we have three stitches across. This is where I tell you to end, but if you wanted to, you could do like a three, like a different kind of decrease. It's like where you would 
pick up all three and go across and you would have like a rounder tab if you wanted to do that and then you would um, end it there. So you kind of have a choice there. Okay, um, and then you're gonna end this off, tie in your ends and so you're gonna, hopefully you've left a long enough towel tag to sew this just with a whip stitch you're gonna kind of put it up kind of close you want your ends of the two sides to be about the same width so that's about where you want to choose it um, you're gonna sew it into the ends of course this would be 20 something long and you just whip stitch it onto there I pulled out a sample that I had done it's red but it will give you an idea of how long this tab is going to be. And I've already got a button attached. So don't worry about the button yet. You're going to, like I said, you're going to attach it there. So it's going to be longer. Um, and then you've got your tab across the top. You can, when you're weaving in your end down here, if you decided not to add that extra little bit at the top, Actually, I did think I'm just going to write that into the pattern. You could kind of round this off. I like the way that is. Um, anyway, so you've got this sewed on down up here. I'm actually going to use my bobby pin to pretend, hey, look, it's attached. Look, I've attached it. <laughs> okay, you're going to want to knit, then take your button and sew it so that it has room to go around a thing. Um, so you may feel like you need to actually add more um, rows here because you want it to go, you know, be able to cover whatever it is you're covering and then um, be able to button to go around something. So you'll um, sew your button closer to the pom-pom so that it can go around. And that's how, kind of how it would look, obviously. There wouldn't be this random red stripe, but that's the, how you, hopefully that's enough information that you can do the button method if you want to do a button. Now for my favorite way, because we hanged it on the fridge and then we just tie it in a little bow around the, the leg of, um, the handle of the fridge I'm going to I like to leave a little bit of a thing because I do need to weave this end in with a needle so I'm going to um, make my thing first I'm going to turn this over and let's read through the instructions really quick okay attach red yarn on back in the red section we're using green it will say color B when you get your pattern to one side of the hat. So we're gonna make one on one side and we're gonna make an, one on the other side. So we've got one, two sides of the hat. So I'm going to attach it on one side of the hat towards the back, but also it can come out on the side of the hat. That's fine too. And I'm going to pull it all the way through so it's just attached like a like with a slip knot kind of thing, or a uh, slip stitch. We've got this. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pull it all the way through. So I have two. I'm gonna chain one. This is like creating the chain that your single, um, your foundation chains would be on. And then I'm gonna go through while I'm holding that with my thumb. I'm gonna go back down and through the chain. So I've got two loops on this side and one on the other. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to chain one. And you want to make sure these chains are kind of loose. I'm going to hold that and then I'm going to go through both as if it was a single crochet. I'm going to go in here again. I'm going to chain one again and kind of hold it. I hold it so it's easier to find when I come back in. I'm going to go in to there again. And remember to keep this chain part pretty loose. Okay, so this is the process that I'm going to keep doing. I've already got it attached on both sides because of the way that I started. And I just like 
this size it works for our family if you just want to do a chain that's fine if you want to do the other where you chain and single crochet back that's fine too so kind of keep going here and I'm gonna come back to you when I have this to be about 12 to 15 inches long okay so I have this I honestly I don't measure it measure it like with the uh, what do you call it tape measure I know that my hand from here to here is about six and a half inches so I just was like okay um, well I didn't do it quite like that but like that's about six and a half and uh, so let's you know it's gonna be 12 13 inches or so and that's good enough for me I don't need it to be perfect this is just for ties so what I do here I should be at a point where I would do another foundation single crochet in fact I'll do it so you can see I would go in through there do my single crochet um, or do my chain to make the next foundation stitch and then do a single crochet however at the end of this I actually say I want you to go into here as if you were going to do it but instead of doing the single crochet or the foundation chain like we would do just go through as if it's a single crochet um, do a slip stitch to um, bind off pull it out and then we're going to get our needle I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do the other one the other alternative way it doesn't matter to me but it will show you guys better what I'm talking about okay so I'm just gonna go in somewhere doesn't have to be perfect I'm just gonna kind of send it back down in through here um, one thing when you're tying it in if I turn it over everywhere I can see my needle through there is going to show my yarn this doesn't matter so much it's exactly the same color um, but if it was a different color of yarn you would be able to see it where it goes in there so I um, that's something to keep in mind no matter what you're um, doing your ends in I'm gonna come up let's see I want to make sure I catch an end so I might just go over right there so that I'm for sure catching something and I'm going to go up again and I'm going to kind of check to see to make sure I've got enough that it's really inside the yarns um, you can go split through yarns it's okay in this case some yarns may not handle splitting well but this stuff does I'm just going to cut that off right there put that in my cycle and that is the end of that then I'm going to come back into down to the beginning put my yarn on in my needle I'm just gonna come in pull this because this is on the edge it, I want it to come to the back I don't want to go through the front underneath I'm just gonna kind of put it in under somewhere here send it all the way across going through it's not too big of a deal because you know like we've got double layers going through here and that's right underneath the pom-pom so that I go through all the way pull it through kind of snug it up to pull that in all the way and then I'm going to make sure it catches something I want to go back through once again my yarn will show anywhere my I can see my needle just to keep that in mind if you are working with variegated or tying in something of a different color and I like to do three on this one because it is holding in my tie there and now I have one tie yay again we want to leave a little bit off because we're gonna be tying in this end just like we tied in the other end I'm going to show you the other way and I'm going to tell you right now the thoughts that I'm having. When I tie this off, I'm going to end up going probably through some of the stuff I've already gone through. That's a lot of yarns going through the same point. Um, with this way, I had it go through two or three times for this one and then it's going to go two or three times for this one. And then my other end is way up here at the end. So I only have those. 
with the way I'm going to do on this side, I do have the two or three from the first string and two or three from the second string. It's something to consider that it might be a little bit awkward to tie in all of these ends. So I'm going to want to, no matter which way I do it, I want it to come across right across the same place. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start it by, I already did my knot first, okay, I'm going to pull that on there, kind of snuck it down. If I were doing it the same way I did here, I would go in up here, stick my yarn thing in and come up and pick it up. Um, I'm going to chain a whole bunch and see you in a second. As I'm going, I'll just talk to you. I'm going to kind of want to make my, make it so that they're about the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it to be pretty close, especially if I'm giving it as a gift. Now, if I come like this, I don't want them to pull too tight, but they're pretty close. I mean, I might have gone like a little bit might have this one um, like one chain too long because we do have one chain that will come back on itself um, but it's okay it's close it's pretty close so I'm gonna do a single or yeah a single crochet in the second chain from the hook I could go in here and it would give me one look and it's an okay look it's fine I want mine to actually match a little closer to this so I'm actually going to go in the back loops down. I feel like it will look a little bit more like the other one. And since I have them on the same thing, I really do feel like that's important. And see, they look similar. This one's a little different because I do have the single crochet in the end, but it's fine. This is just for my family and my kids won't even notice. Uh, you and I will be the only ones that notice. Okay, I am going to turn my audiobook back on and meet you down at the end. I have a single crochet into my last chain. The only thing left here is where it attached and I come over just here and go through and then go through again, just attaching with a slip stitch join kind of thing. Um, do another chain to fasten off, leave enough yarn to um, weave in my ends, pull that through and now it's attached like that. Um, looking at the two, you know, it's like you can't really tell. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference. A trained person might be able to tell. But for the most part, they look the same. Um, so then we're just going to do the same thing as we did with the other side. And... attach my thing. I'm going to send this one in kind of towards the top here because I do have so many ends to do. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to come down a little bit. Go across to in here. And like I said, it gets a little tight because I've already got the ends from this side going through some of these. And I'm going to go in across somewhere through here. And I do, because this one is the ties, I like to make sure that I go back and forth three times because I don't want my ties falling off. Okay, and then this one here, I'm going to work down lower into the hat. 
So it is a little bit lower, so I'm going to go across right through here. And then I'm going to come down and go in lower. And for good measure, I'm going to go through one more time. I'm going to make sure that I catch something with this one so that it doesn't just like pull out through the same spot. Although I don't think I'm quite going in the same spot anyway. Just always want to be careful. And go all the way through across to the other side. And cut my end. And oh my goodness, I am done. I am done, I'm done, I'm done. Ta-da! I'm going to have my ties there to hang that up with. And floof up my thing. And isn't that just so adorable? I just love this pattern. It is so much fun. I'm excited to hang this on my fridge this Christmas. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun with this tutorial and that you are having a happy Christmas in July. And because I always forget with tutorials, remember to let your light shine through your creations. And I'll see you guys next time.